Hello and welcome to a uh, another marveling in the madness with myself, Stephen, and Dominique. And as per usual, we're gonna go straight into the rugby because obviously we've got to talk about this absolute thrashing, the uh, absolute domination. I don't think there's enough word to describe literally how bad England were yesterday. I don't know what you mean. There's no rugby played. <laughs> of course you would say that um, <laughs> so, selective amnesia I think um, <laughs> yes it was um, how do I put this nicely you can't didn't no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah I, I've described it to you this weekend as uh, it looked like we were a pub team playing a professional team it was it was pretty um, painful to watch um, yeah that's, that's about it France were brilliant Let's not take that away from France. They were... Well, I think that's undeniable at that they, point. Uh, yeah, they were a brilliant team. They played well and they looked like they were having fun. We looked cool. like we wanted to be back on the bus and go home. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was my uh, favourite message for you. I was like, uh, taxi for England, you know, they don't want to be in anymore. At least after the first half as well, because we knew it was bad, but of course that, we didn't know it was going to be that bad. No, I I thought it would be quite a like a reasonably even game, and then uh, it wasn't. It looked like uh, it really was men v boys, wasn't it? Um, yeah. We've got a long way to go on that performance. Now, let's be honest, we are better than that. Um, I think as a team, we oh, are better. But undeniable, um, it's just there's just so many questions that you know that need to be asked. Obviously, because a loss of that. Stash is ridiculous, especially for a world class team. I know yes. they've had their, their, their moments, is obviously they're not playing at their best, but still, you know. I know, I think I, had, as you don't, I think it's just going to have to be chalked off as a you, well, you can't chalk it off in some ways because you need to learn from it, but chalk it off as a France were at their best, we were at our worst. Um, take the lessons from it, don't. Don't swap your uh, fullback in your number nine when there's a a rook, so that um you can uh, so that Dupont can kick to the corner and then they can attacking line out from like five meters out. Don't do that because that's a bad idea. Um, don't get stripped of the ball. Don't keep giving the ball away. Don't get turned over. Basically, all the basics of rugby. Uh, don't do the, don't do them wrong, and you'll be all right. So uh, yeah. Ah, yeah, it was painful. I was laughing. I honestly was laughing at it. I was like, it's either laugh or cry at this point. I'm just going to choose to... Um... All right, yeah, I think at some point, like I say, you just have to laugh because it's just absolutely a mask at that point. And even, even I, as a, as a neutral, I was like, wow. <laughs> Don't know why this is hurting me a little bit, but I'm like, yeah, well, I feel the pain in this one. <laughs> yeah, it, was, uh, it wasn't good. It was, uh, it was a painful old match, but... What can you do? We uh, we'll try again next week, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we can do. But like I say, you got to give your props to uh, France and obviously outstanding people like uh, Dupont having an absolute phenomenal game. Yes. and many others. But I just can't remember the name. Dante, Dante yeah. was or Dante. Uh, he was just turning us over at every every rook. Every t- every route we got to, it was just, he was there limping over the limping over the ball, and you're like, "What? What have you? How have you got there?" A and B. Where is our players? <laughs> <laughs> where is our reinforcement? You know, yeah, where, like, where? how are you always there if our team can't get there? Like, what's going off? Anyway, but uh, it was funny. Yeah. At the end of the at the end of the game, I was like, "Well, yep." Well, I just kept. Te- I was texting you, just saying, "Can we finish it now?" Can uh, on, on, as I said on the bright side, we can only get better. I say that, and we'll probably get smashed like sixty-five-five by uh, Ireland next week. But just remember, every team has to have an embarrassing loss at some point. Yeah, uh, there was a time where I thought, "Oh, we'll never lose." I think it was Japan. Oh yes, yeah, the World Cup. Yeah, 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 and yeah. That took me by surprise. So every now and again, you know, yeah, <laughs> you get something to knock you out, but. Yeah, these big teams, you know, we, we all take a little surprise. So hopefully, you, like you say, you learn from that because there's obviously a lot of learning lessons you can take from that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I could use the right uh, metaphor because I used the completely wrong metaphor there. <laughs> <laughs> so that, 
So you can just edit that bit out. It'll be fine. It's, it's, <laughs> so, it's a Sunday. We'll blame it on that. Oh, yeah. And then did you watch today's game? I did. I did. We should probably should we talk about the other game that was played first, the uh, Wales v Italy game. That was the first game. Uh, uh you can because I didn't have time to watch it. I watched a little bit of it, but uh, just uh, I I thought Wales would probably have just enough to beat Italy, and they did. Which is mm-hmm. actually the way Italy been playing recently. It's kind of surprising in some ways. Mm. Um, but but um, Italy is showing. I think it won't be long before they're probably overtaking, so potentially going to start beating teams regularly. So it's exciting. Yeah, they're showing a lot of promise at the moment. You know, it's actually exciting to watch them. Yeah. When you, when I do watch them, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's exciting. It's so exciting. It, it, it's so it. exciting. I just do it. No, but beforehand, I think <laughs> in previous years, I generally wouldn't watch the game at all. Was, I was just yeah. at work at the, at the time, so it wasn't oh, just because I didn't want to watch them. At the time, yeah, that's right. Be- beforehand, I generally wouldn't watch an Italy game. About it. It's a waste of time. Whereas now they are, you know, starting to perform. Yes, they're losing, but it's it's looking more of a spectacular uh, yeah. match to watch. So, yeah, yeah happy for them. I feel like I say, give them a year or two, and they'll probably start winning a little bit more regularly, or just winning in general, not really regularly, but winning. Probably start beating England at this rate. Yes. It's a possibility. Oh dear. Anyway, uh, sorry, you were you were saying the uh, France Scotland game. Not oh, sorry, Ireland Scotland game from today. Yeah, that was really good. That's they good held match. off for quite a while. To be honest, it wasn't until really the second half when you know the split started to happen, and obviously they started getting tired and things started opening up. But yeah, the first half. Oh my gosh, you know that was a good, mm. good tussle back and forth. You didn't know which way it was going to go. So for me. Like you, you were probably saying this is the most entertaining match of the weekend. Obviously, we can go back to yesterday, but mm. I wouldn't say that's entertaining for the right person. It was just an absolute white watch. <laughs> You're just laughing at that. You can't really be like, oh, I had fun watching that. I was like, ugh, it's, it's just happening. You're just watching it happen. Whereas yeah. in uh, the, today's game, it was generally like, okay, you don't know who's going to win. It's way more entertaining. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's where I'll leave it with that. Close games are always more exciting, aren't they? I think yes. um, more engaging as well. That's it. Yeah, I thought I thought Scotland played well. I think they just kind of they're just not quite as polished as Ireland, and they don't quite they didn't seem to have quite as much in reserve. Like Ireland, almost in the second half, they sort of <clears> considering <throat> how many players they had go off injured, they just sort of almost mm. kicked it into a second gear and yeah, and just sort of pulled away from Scotland, where Scotland sort of fell up fell off a bit in the second half. They lost their intensity, but so. Uh, well, it's hard yeah. to be as polished as Ireland as well. Like, they haven't dropped a game, you know. Yeah. So, obviously, their confidence is running high. Yeah, they're br- a brilliant team. Well, they're, they're the best team in the world for a reason. Like, they, yeah. they beat the New Z- they beat New Zealand at home last year now, wasn't it, in, in, a, in a series. So, teams don't do that. So, mm. Ireland, are a, Ireland are a formidable team. Um, I think... Uh, looking forward to the World Cup, it, it makes it more exciting now because it's not like the normal top three teams, even though they are top, but normally they wouldn't be. Uh, I think it's going to make the World Cup a lot more exciting now. There's a few more dark horses now that are coming in, you know, and giving anyone a run for their money, which I think is good for the sport. Yeah, I think I still think France have probably got to be favourites for their own World Cup, personally, but uh, I yeah, think there's, there's a lot of teams that could be there. Yeah. Yeah, talking about uh, exciting teams though. Your uh, your boy Pollard played well today for Leicester. Yes, I did see the score at the end. Obviously, well, see, I didn't watch the match, but was it a good match? It was. It was. So the first half. Well, I think the first fifty minutes were actually um, nil nil. Hmm. It's. I think it was the first time this season in the Premiership that the first half had gone nil nil. It was actually considering it was nil nil, it was actually quite an exciting game. It was a lot of backwards and forwards. Yeah. And uh it was just like a, a little bit of inaccuracy in the red zone, but generally speaking, both teams had a lot of attacking intent. Um but we got away with a few bits in the first half if we're honest. The uh mm-hmm. Mike Brown tripped a guy when he was probably about to go through and score a try. And the ref didn't catch it, so um, that was <laughs> probably a fortunate one. I think it'd have been yellow card and maybe penalty try. And there was one that they might have scored a try. It, they they gave it as held up, but it wasn't. 
it almost looked like it was grounded. But in the second half, we scored four tries. And again, our last try was probably a little bit suspect, but we'd have had a penalty anyway. So that the chances are we may well have scored it. Um, so all around, pretty good performance. They scored one try, we scored four. Good, exciting second half. Some Take good it. tries. So, uh, yeah. Points so, on the board. We keep it moving. Cheer me up after yesterday, that's for certain. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, yeah, so there's some good news for you in the end, you know. Yeah, at least one team's playing well. Uh, that's when both teams lose, it's bad. Hey, you can't have them all, you know. You can't have them no, all. No, you can't. But there we go. Right, moving on to our next talk, we're going to talk about Mr. Beast. Obviously, he's come into some flack in the media, which, in my opinion, is just... Absolutely absurd. I think it would happen. Well, the first one happened when he was doing his uh blindness video. You know, just giving people their vision back and people just going absolutely mental. Why? Like, who is he to go do that? <laughs> Why does it matter? <laughs> just absolutely absurd. Uh, just yeah, I know what you're saying. It's, it's so funny, isn't it? When, when anyone who does anything good, or what that can be perceived as good, even like you get. A load of people saying, "Oh, they're only doing it for this reason. They're it's terrible what they're doing." You're like, "Yes, I'm sure the person who's got their sight back sees this. Uh, what they've done to them is really terrible, and mm. I'm sure they care about the reasoning behind why they've given them the sight back." Actually, there's probably there's good reasons. Obviously, Mr. Beast makes his money through his videos, so he's going to publicize it. He's going to raise awareness through videos. Mm. Like you're going to make he by raising awareness, and millions of people are watching it. People are more aware of the plight. It's probably, it's probably given. It's probably meant a lot of people have donated to causes because of that. Yes, it's not going to solve the issue overnight, but it obviously made raises awareness. It's crazy, isn't it, that people then jump on the wagon? Oh, he's only doing it for publicity, or he's only doing it for, for fame. It's like, well, if he is, so what? A, he's helping people and he's raising awareness. Well, that's like, it. You, you can't judge his his actual his 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 personal reasoning for doing it. Okay, but even if you say, okay, he's, he's doing it to grow his band, band, I can't even speak today, using it to grow his brand, even, there you go, that's the right one. His band. Okay, it is the day, people have still benefited from it, so I don't really see the issue. Like, that's, that's, not... me playing, that's me playing devil's advocate, as well, either way, I wouldn't really care, like, at the end of the day, something amazing was still done. Yeah. So, what, what's the big problem? Why, not... why so much backlash? I know it's not like he's stealing food from children, is it, or something oh. like that? It's not like he's doing something actually really wrong. He's he's going helping people, and in a quite a positive way. And actually, I probably I think he's probably doing it for genuine reasons, and he genuinely cares. When you watch some of his videos, yeah. he gets quite emotional about helping people. So I really do think he actually cares. However, even if he didn't, he's helping them and he's raising yeah. awareness for the issues. Get over, get the, off your high horse. <laughs> the second one is he's gone to South Africa and he's. Nothing is again nothing that outrageous. He's just handed out some shoes. That's it. That's the whole uh, video. He just handed out some shoes, and he's like, "Oh, the white man's going over." I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, forget about racism and everything. Just for a minute, he's done something amazing for children. You know, that are going to really benefit from yeah. for a lot of them. That's their first pair of shoes. Who doesn't really matter where it comes from? That's crazy, isn't it? Like, I, I, I know, I know. Charities in the past, for example, have got it wrong. Like, they've, they've just like, rather than like empowering people and giving them, helping them start up businesses and helping them, you know, helping them help themselves, you sort of thing. They've yeah. just gone over to places and, uh, anywhere in the world, whether that England or or Africa or some or different places, mm. like charities have gone over and just like made a mess of things because they've. They've given money or something, or they've given. I, re- I remember someone telling me a, a famous story about um, a charity that went to a, a village. I think it was a village somewhere in Africa, but I can't remember exactly where it was. It, it doesn't really matter. It's just the, the story is interesting. And uh, these uh, people went over and were like, "Oh, we're um, they, they found this really fertile land and it was beautiful and uh, right next to a river." And they're like, "Oh," they were talking to the locals, like, "Why don't you plant these crops here?" And they're like, "Planted a load of crops and they." Gave a beautiful yield, and they're all they're like, look at these fruits and vegetables; they're wonderful. Look at these. And then one day, just before, a few, uh, I can't remember how long before harvest, but before harvest, a load of uh, hippos came out of the uh, river and destroyed the entire crop. And the locals looked at them and went, "Yeah, 
that's well, why yeah. like <laughs> that that kind of epitomizes um yeah. not not engaging with people and actually treating people with respect however mm. like being kind and giving someone some trainers or some shoes like really yeah. and i think that one was on his uh fundraising channel so for there he takes really no proceeds all of that literally just went to buying the shoes so again i suppose you could make the argument yes it's still a growing brand but i'm like again i I kill a dead horse with this however the saying is um again some good was done what's the harm yeah it's it's crazy isn't it i think you just think these kids now have a pair of shoes it's probably going to mean that they're they're walking around and their 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 health is going to be so much better Mm. and they it probably give them a better um life because they can they're they're not going to be struggling with bare feet all the time and all the injuries and sicknesses that probably come from that so it probably help them with their education it probably help them with their everything you know yeah but also just go show that there are people out there you know that are willing to do something and actually go and do it there's so many well we won't throw charities under the bus but you'll donate or whatever but you never really see the actions of your money so you do wonder where it goes and also obviously i've not donated to mr beast but obviously you can see that there's a direct correlation to the money he has and to where it's going yeah so i feel like you know it's one of the better ways of going about it and not and often actually i've noticed a mr beast i don't know in this case but often he's working with established charities or mm-hmm. established people that are already doing things and he's just going in and supporting them yeah. raising awareness um and actually that's the right way to do it you're helping local people support local other local people and that's oh, that's 100%. wonderful like, you know the only thing i think he's doing the right way he's got a huge platform it's not like he really needs to grow that much which i think the argument itself is so stupid like it's one of the biggest youtubers on the planet how much more does he really need to grow yeah. but he is using his platform you know to help those others in need so it's weird yeah. you can give me a pair of trainers if he wants I'll take That's it. what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you give me, give me a house, Mister B. So it's fine. No, I don't need a house. I, mean, a house but... I think he's most one of probably the most genuine guys, or I can perceive that doesn't really care about money. Obviously, I've never met the dude. He could have his own intent, but he looks like one of those people that genuinely doesn't care about money. Just wants to make good videos and help those around him. Yeah, well, I think he said in the he said in the. A video i can't remember where it was and they were asking him like he lives a really like simple lifestyle apparently mm. they're like why it's like well if i lost everything if i lost all the money and lost everything then it wouldn't affect me because i don't need all that stuff i just i live simply and then if i lost everything it, i would still have it i'd still be fine yeah. not a big but, difference is it no and he's like well, yeah if obviously he's quite an astute businessman and, and mm. he's clearly made in, making a lot of money but he seems to be using it for good things. Yes, he's probably comfortable, but um, that's it's, it's very easy to judge other people, and I think a lot of people just a do it to make themselves feel better, and b do it because they're invisible and they can just have a dig at someone online. And sometimes mm-hmm. uh, just being abusive seems to make people feel better about themselves, which is, or maybe they're just trying to bring everyone down to their level. I don't know. It's quite. It's really sad, isn't it? Yeah. That, that that abusive. It's it, it's sad. A sad probably reflection on people. I think as well. Mm. Um and probably, just I don't know. You just kind of hope everyone gets a little bit more um compassion and care in their lives. One hundred percent. Because also think like if it was like the one of the other billionaires, we don't need to name. But if they did the same thing, would they get as much backlash? It's 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 just. Utterly absurd, in my opinion, but that's the way we live in. There's a lot of billionaires that have committed all their uh, money to charity when they die, mm. which which always makes me chuckle a little bit. It's like, yeah, they're giving it away when they die. I'm sure, and to be fair, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's a bit cruel because actually they do give away a lot of money. Oh, most of them give away quite significant sums now. Yeah. So it's like, actually, Mr. Beast is giving it all away. Like, he's giving a lot of it away now, mm. and yet he's getting flack for doing so. Um, I just, uh, to be honest, we're probably giving too much time of day to the people making these comments in terms of 
That's, or like, like you know what I mean? Like they, yeah. that's that's what they're after, isn't it? Really, they're they after. Have, yeah, they have one, but I think it just needs to be said. You know, I just think it's absolutely absurd. Yeah, I tend to agree. I try. To, I try to not be overly critical of people. Um, and it's, hard, it's it's easy to make judgments about people's intent without really knowing their intent. That's <laughs> big facts. I'm you're doing it for that. Am I? Really? That's mm. news to me. Okay. So has anyone asked him, you know? What's your evidence? Well, I'm sure <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, have you have you got a teacher segment for us this week? Uh, I was thinking before. I haven't got anything uh, major, but I, I've got a few little uh, little little anecdotes, little stories of my week this week with my wife. So there's there's two little little stories. Well, actually, she, a she's preparing for parents' evening, which takes quite a while, which is always amusing. Just a a, a day and an evening to for like five ten minutes to tell the parents how their kids doing. But anyway, I think there's quite a bit of prep that goes into it. But no, so. The first one is I've got to build her a post box. She wants a little post box for school. A few, so I've got to get my get my get my woodworking on. Ooh, a bit bit of time. I did. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just just build her a post box. So uh, that'll, that'll amuse me for a little bit of time. <clears throat> you always got to do new craft things, even if you're not very crafty. You've got to learn if you're. Uh... Yeah, it's a post box. How hard could it be? Ah, I'm sure it'd be fine. I like woodworking anyway. It's quite enjoyable, but it's quite funny. Uh, mm-hmm. And the second one, we were having a meal out last night. Um, we were at Wagamama's. There, other restaurants are available. And uh... <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I don't even feel like we have to say that, but I enjoy saying We it really do, but it's still uh, funny. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was looking at the chopsticks, which I hadn't used, but I thought, that, you know, the wooden chopsticks that you have on your table? I figured yeah. they'd probably end up throwing them away because obviously they've been on our now we've been having food, so they're probably just disposed of, I thought. So I was like, wife, do we need should we do we need these? And she's like, No, I think they're probably a bit dangerous for the children. I, we won't I won't take that home. She's like, Oh, it's the one thing that you don't I don't need. <laughs> that's rubbish. But random tires, you know, that's absolutely fine. Uh, so, <laughs> so then our life we uh, and Always, always reflecting on random things that we can uh, take for the children. Mm, I think there's still some schools out on strike. I was having a conversation right with my sister. So a few schools, not closed down, but obviously more or less going to be closed down just because teachers will be on strike. So Yeah, the strike will yeah, be next week. Hopefully they get, you know, the things they're looking for because they definitely need a lot more support. Yeah, just a bit. To be honest, I reckon, that, you know, if the government said, We'll give you, we'll give the schools the money for the pay rises that we've told them to find out their own budgets, and we'll give. So did I? Did I, I think we discussed this like before that. Yeah. yeah the school yeah. that uh, the government have said, yeah, you can have a pay rise, but it's coming out of your school budget, which is bizarre. Um, also, if they just give them t- some TAs, give them some TAs, and give them some resources for like toys and educational resource. Well, mm. which toys can, which toys normally are if you get the right one, then. The teachers would probably be like, fine. Yeah. So I don't know. It's bonkers. Bonkers. And the oh. doctor junior doctors are going on strike now, aren't they? I uh, first I've heard of it. First I've heard of it. Yeah, they want they're going on strike. They want to I think it was a thirty two percent pay rise or something like that. Jeez. Yeah, which uh, like I know that it's it's uh, probably a terrible working environment at the moment being in hospital. Mm. Um, what we've heard is the same with nurses and everything. I think thirty-two percent might be a bit excessive, um, and I doubt they're actually looking for thirty-two percent. They're probably just looking for it's a starting point, isn't it? But yeah, like I say, something that gets people talking it might be a little bit crazy, but obviously they'd be willing to negotiate for something a bit uh, yes. more reasonable. So yes, I think I think the the basic point is that they. There's two measures of how they've been affected by inflation. I think one was like they've their their pay for basic earners has dropped by sixteen percent or twenty two percent, depending on how you measure it from two thousand and eight. But then to make up the difference, you need to. That's why they've asked for this thirty two percent on top of it. Yeah, because it's twenty two percent lower. Then you need to add more onto their current salary to get there. But um, 
yeah i i don't know i think there's pro there's probably a much lower ground that's acceptable yeah um, but i also feel like they definitely need it obviously not just yeah. the team but just the whole sort of nhs you know they were the champions that sort of you know rode us through the whole COVID situation and obviously still yeah. dealing with it now so and literally put them on put themselves on the front line when we weren't entirely sure what was going on so yeah i feel like you know they definitely are their unsung heroes and they definitely need again a lot more support obviously not maybe 30 percent, but something yeah, something. Yeah. Or at least like a, right, we'll give you this now, and this is how we're going to get back up to the, like, where you were yeah. at. And this, this, we're going to have a plan on how we're going to get from where you are now to where you were. Like, yeah. doctors are obviously really well paid. That's not, mm -hmm. but then they've got a lot of responsibility on them. Yeah. Um, however, like, no one wants, I like, in my line of work, I wouldn't accept a, 20, 16, even a 16% pay cut. There's no way, like, if my company kept offering me a... In the private sector, you see, if you don't like something, you just leave and go somewhere else that's going to pay you more money. Yeah. Um, And that's why the market in the private sector, not uh, not in every area, but in a lot of areas, is, uh, a lot of uh, jobs have increased in their uh, salaries. And it's not true across across the board. Mm. But there is a, there's a more competitive thing. Um. And I don't, I don't agree with that model all entirely, but the, I think the public sector has to recognise that. And actually, the public sector has taken the biggest hit since the recession of two thousand eight. And I don't mm. think the government, as of yet, has really recognised that and put that right. Um, that's across the board, and I don't think that's right, considering that they probably took a large brunt of the um, the pain as well. So. Uh, mm. I know that's probably got a bit political, but I don't, I don't mean it as a political party. I just think we need a plan to, to rectify no, it in the future. No, I can understand. Like, so you need a plan of action and a way of looking forward and something that we can all benefit from. Because there's one thing that just to blame everything on inflation, but, you know, we know this happens all the time, but we need to rise up with it, you know, so there are plans in place so people, you know, aren't in such uh, dire situations all the time. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of a lot of difficult situations at the moment. Oh, we talked about it on this before. You know, it's. I think it's something that's going to come up for a while. You know, uh, not all. Well, I, I feel like we won't stop talking about it until like spring comes slash summer because then some of the issues won't really be an issue anymore. Yeah. Everything feels better in the summer. Yeah, because even today the summer's out for a little bit, and yeah, I sat out there for a good ten minutes and it felt nice. So I was like, ooh. Oh, getting a feeling. This is good. Sun on my face. Yeah, relaxing. Out there with my soup and my bread, living my good life. <laughs> nice. You get that. You get that cheesy bread on the go. You know it. Mm, yeah. We had a bit of that today as well. Stains me shop. Other mm. shops. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, oh no. It, it was oh. it was genuinely nice just to sit out there for a little bit. It's one of the things I have missed. I think it has. Help my mental state, you know. Not that like I'm doom and gloomy, but they have that thing where they call it uh seasonal depression. Yeah. Just because yeah. you're not getting that much vitamin D. So for me to sit out there for a good maybe ten to fifteen minutes just felt nice. Very good. Yeah, yeah I uh I went outside and uh, did a little bit of looking after my koi. Nice. They they were all they were all happy. I might I might one day put a little video of them on here. But we can have like a pet section of our uh, channel. I'll leave you to that. <laughs> it can just be you and your fish, your own private, you know. Just, just me and the fish. Just leave you to it. <laughs> that, that gets more views. I'm like, okay, clearly you don't need me, so I'll, I'll move on to other ventures. We're making all the views now from fish. <laughs> that that could be our third channel. We're not going to talk about our second one just yet, but that can be our third channel. Just be like a GoPro, just above some fish, and just leave like a live feed and just... Yeah, it run. Permanent live feed of the fish. Yeah, and then just put like some therapeutic music over it and just, you know, blast the internet with videos of that. Someone will watch it. There'll be somebody out there who really likes fish and they'll love it. Just a permanent live stream of the fish enjoying yeah. life. I'll do it. Get a bit of Twitch on the go or something. I'll just live stream the fish on feed. Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do talk some nonsense. 
It's part of the fun, isn't it? Let's just go through. Like you can put probably put just about anything on YouTube, and you are going to get viewership. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Mm. We should test that model. I might put some paint drying on YouTube. Probably. See, I'm, gonna, see, I'm just going to put a live stream of paint drying. Ah, the cat's decided to join the cat. <laughs> you want to make it into the video? Welcome, Achilles. Lovely to see you. He looks delighted about the situation. <laughs> hey, he put himself in that situation. There you go. He did. I've, st- I've started the segment. We now have the cat before your fish. My Nala hasn't made an appearance yet. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Right. If you have anything to add, do you? No, well, I did. I did see a story actually. It Ooh. was. It was about Amazon. It's only a very short one, but um, I saw a, a story that people had, in the news have been complaining that Amazon had been replacing like high high end expensive items with really random things. I think it was only a few cases, and I don't think. And I don't. Obviously, I've never had an issue at all from Amazon, so like I can't. I can't mow into the deliveries, but it was just sort of an amusing story. It was saying like someone had ordered. Um, I'm sure it wasn't that last bit again. You, I can't hear you. Sorry. Hello. Oh, can you hear me? All right. Oh, we had a little. We had a little break. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Back. Again. No, I was just saying it's it's it. It was an amusing story in one sense. I'm sure it wasn't amusing to the people who spent hours trying to rectify the issues. It never is when you have the issue, the issue is it, in the situation. I think I think they all managed to get mm. the money back in the end. But it was like someone had ordered like I don't know an expensive graphics card or something, and then like they'd received like dog food or something in the in, in the package. <laughs> and it was like what? <laughs> it's kind of like what what like the supermarkets do because i remember back in the day mom used to do like the online shopping obviously they'll come and deliver to you yeah. deliver it to you even so you would get like oh i've ordered four parts of like protein yogurt or whatever and now you've got six oranges you're like yeah, yeah not even roughly in the same boat like if you just said oh we'll just give you normal yogurt but like, okay we can deal with this as well yeah. but now we're just going to keep you something completely different just because we can. It, yeah, it really must suck for the people in the moment, like because then they've got to spend ages trying to sort it out, and whoever's bought it would like. I think this was for their son; they were distraught, and so it's, it does suck. But I was just, yeah. it did make me think about like the random swaps people do and things. Like, I was uh, talking to my wife's uncle, and he said, uh, that "I think they'd once ordered like congratulations on your baby girl, and uh, the shop had swapped it for congratulations on your baby boy <laughs> as a card." Uh. <laughs> I thought, wow, you've you've really not quite grasped the idea there of a swap, have you? You, you know what would have been funny though if they like just cross it out, like, oh, we couldn't actually give you the one you wanted, but we just crossed it out and get on it. <laughs> then I'll be like, you know what? It's funny, at least it's point for trying. Yeah, that's true. It's it's the same, you know, you know, talking about swaps, you know when you go to restaurants and pubs and you mm. go, Can I have a Coke, please? And they go, it's, it's Pepsi, is that all right? You go, your immediate reaction is, not really, I wanted Coke, but <laughs> I'll drink it, so yeah, I'll have the Pepsi, but yeah, like, if I'd wanted a Pepsi, I'd have asked for a Pepsi, so True. and, like, I could I, I understand they only have Pepsi on, so it's fine and yeah. I, I don't mind Pepsi, Pepsi's fine, however, it's like they always, you, always, you always have the same conversation, uh, to be honest it's probably my fault, because you walk in and you can see that it's a Pepsi and I still don't click to go, can I have a Pepsi, please? I still go, can I have a Coke, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you think, ah, oh, try my luck, see what happens. And then you still get the question, is Pepsi fine? And then even I do, like, there'll be probably a moment's pause on my, <sighs> yeah, it'll do. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks like, for ruining my day. I'm sure some people really prefer Pepsi. That's fine. But I normally ask for it. There are other brands out there. Yeah. <laughs> All the different other brands. It's usually Pepsi and Coke, though. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I was trying to think. Of, I can't think of any other hilarious uh, or funny situations like that at the moment, but uh, there are plenty of them out there where you go, wow. I didn't have a swap, but I had an order. order. I am struggling with English today. Order go completely wrong. So nice. I've got a vegetarian lasagna. Got one with meat in it. That was interesting. You didn't uh, eat it, did you? Well... 
the thing is, like, you know me, I'm not one to cause a fuss. So, like, eat, like, started eating to her. Like, yeah, it doesn't taste really like, you know, it's a bit, it seems a bit more oily than it normally is, but like, that's whatever. But then me making a mistake, telling her more about, yeah, she just lost her mind. And she was like, yeah, we're going to have to swap that around. Like, we don't have to make that big of a deal. You know, it's not like it's the end of the world. I'm not going to die. I'll be okay. But yeah, they swapped it around. It was just nasty. But you always hear those scary stories of like, they mm. take the food, uh, or take the plate back and do all sorts of craziness to it, which I'm sure they did it, but it's now engulfed in my mind. So anytime I get food and they're all just slightly wrong, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to fail it. I don't want no spit in this uh, food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, mm, my stomach will take it. We'll just be sick later. It's fine. Oh, it's dear. what comes out later with it. So, nice, yeah, nice. you stop watching those videos. Probably. Yeah, probably do. <laughs> Because oh, really they just some of them are so gross. Yeah, that's true. But you can also understand sometimes because I imagine people are just the most annoying people. When it comes yeah, to we are, we all are to be fair. Mm. Yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Good. <laughs> all the way to I think, I, I think we'll close it right there. <laughs> Thank you. For this has been uh, Marvel and Madness. I've been Stephen Matembu with Dominic. Please like and subscribe. Take care.